This is the potato guide. I'm gonna show you almost every way to make and cook one of the most beloved foods, potatoes. This is our biggest every way so far, 43 total methods. So let's make this simple. Almost every type of potato dish is cooked one of three ways, roasted, fried, or boiled. And that's exactly how we'll be breaking this up. Our taste testers are gonna be eating every single dish and voting on a scale of one to 10 to determine the winner of each category. But here's the catch. Once we find the winner of each category, we're gonna combine each winner into a single super potato dish. Yes, potato on potato on potato. But does that make the greatest potato dish? Now listen, there are three rules. Rule number one, no crazy weird viral recipes. We're not gonna shove a potato into a cannon and blast it into the stratosphere. So everything must be a real proper recipe or technique. Rule Rule number two, it has to be widely accepted as a real potato dish. And rule number three, each recipe must be wholly focused on the potato, okay? No dumplings, no breads, just potato. So our judges are ready to go. We're gonna be rating this on a scale of one to 10, one being the worst thing ever placed on the human tongue, and 10 being a golden potato sent down from the galactic heavens above. So let's begin. So we're starting off with the roasted category. Number one, starting off with a classic baked potato. It's very simple. Rub a large russet potato with oil. Ugh, maybe not like that. Season the skin generously with salt and pepper. It should stick. Pick it 425 Fahrenheit or 218 Celsius for 40 to 50 minutes till crispy on the outside and fork tender on the inside. Typically, you'd fluff the insides and fill it with something, but we're going plain for a simple and fair rating. Vikram, 4.5. Me, a 4.8. And Cam, a 5. Total, 14.3. This is the base to many great things, but by itself, it can't be as great as, well, the things that it can create. This is peak average potato. Number two, twice baked. I'll be honest, I haven't had many of these. You take a fully baked potato, cut the top third off, scoop out the inside, take that potato flesh and mash it up, add some butter, sour cream, a little splash of milk, sliced chives, grated cheddar, mash thoroughly till combined. Now you can optionally spoon that all back into your carved out potato, or you can mash it more fine and pipe it back into your potato. We're keeping it simple here. Pop that back into the oven at 400 Fahrenheit or 205 Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes, pull out, and it should look like this. Now let's rate. Vikram, a three, myself, a 5.5, and Cam, a 6.5. Total, 15 points. It's a loaded baked potato with more work, and I'm here for it. That's kind of why I'm not here for it. It's nothing special. It's almost like a mashed potato inside a potato. It's still a baked potato in disguise. The secondary quality of baking it really does not add much to me. Moving on. Number three, potato skins. This is a very American thing, I think. Another fully baked potato. Scoop the insides out. Obviously, the insides can be used for mashed potato, whatever, figure it out. Now, you crisp that up in a hot oven, pull it out, add a touch of unsalted butter, into them. Some grated cheddar, crispy chopped bacon, you know, the works. Back into the oven till the cheese is melted, pull it out, top with a dollop of sour cream and, and a pinch of thinly sliced green onion. Now how's a potato skin gonna fare? Vigram a three, me a five, and Cam a surprising seven. Jesus. Total 15 points. The exact same score as the twice baked. They're crispy, cheesy. The only thing that they're really lacking is that creamy factor. You have most of the potato removed. The stuff on the inside is great, but out yeah. of like 40 plus potatoes, where does that rank? Pretty low. That's how I feel too. It tastes great, but ultimately it's just a potato. Number four, Duchess potato. This sounds like something that's coming from the era of the 1700s. I don't know if it is, but usually that doesn't mean it's gonna be good. Starting with boiled potatoes, we pass through a potato ricer, heat over medium, constantly stir, add some butter, season with salt, a little bit of heavy cream. And this is the important part. You're gonna begin to mix four egg yolks one at a time until homogenous. Get that whole mixture into a piping bag and pipe under parchment paper into little flowers, little twirls. Obviously you can use a piping tip if you want a nice little design. Pop into oven at 425 Fahrenheit or two 18 Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes or until they emerge like this. Let's taste. Vikram, a 6.5. Me, a 5. And Cam, a 5. 16.5, our new leader. The flavor's awesome. It's because the texture is unique doesn't mean it's good. I've never seen this before. So I came in as completely blind. They taste really airy, almost like a dessert. It feels like a reinvention of a potato. But at the end of the day, what brings it down is it still tastes like a potato. I wouldn't go out of my way to eat them. Moving on. Number five, potato casserole. This is actually the Dauphinois potato from my cookbook. The link to the book is in the description. Quite literally just sliced potatoes, cheese, cream. It gets combined in a pan, you bake it, remove from the oven, you get a beautiful bubbly Dauphinois. And now we rank. Vikram, a 7.2. Me, a 6.9. <laughs> nice, but also I don't know why I scored my own dish like that. And Cam, a 7.5. With a total of 21.6, a big overall first place dish so far. I'm scared to put too many sevens on the board. There's so many things we're eating. I want to make sure we really pick the best potato dish. Potatoes, cheese, and cream. You cannot go wrong with that combination. Now moving on. Number six, smashed potato. Although they start with a parboil, they get their finish by being baked. So we have some parboiled small potato. 
potatoes. We lightly smash them, coat them generously in any fat of choice, could be vegetable oil, duck fat, whatever. Season with salt and pepper, pop into a hot oven and until GBD, that's golden brown and delicious. Remove from the pan and put on a plate. Let's taste. When things are really good, sometimes it just comes out. And the ratings come in at an 8.7, a 7, and a 7. Our new leader at 22.7. It's sort of this, like, best of every world in the potato world. But why did you, we only give it a 7, though? Because I feel like there's a ceiling on those. Yeah, I could eat any time, any day, any amount. That's why it's an 8.7 for me. You get sort of a roasted potato and also a fried potato at the same time. It's luscious and creamy on the inside, shockingly crispy on the outside if you do it right. On to number 7, smoked. So into a smoker set to 300, pop in one large rust potato coated in a little bit of oil, seasoned with salt and pepper. Two and a half hours later, it looks like this. I do love things that are smoked. Now let's rank. The rankings come in with a three, a four, and a four. A total of 11 points. There's no smoky flavor to it, and it's just overall let down. I am shocked by how little smoke it picked up. Maybe if it had picked up more smoke, I would have liked it more, but at the same time, it's just not necessary. I could see ways this could be done better, but ultimately, cooked this way, certainly not the best. Number eight, salt baked. I love salt baking. I don't know how I feel about it with a potato, but you're gonna get a whole lot of salt, like 700 grams. Toss it with enough water until it has the consistency of packable snow. Put a layer of that on a baking tray, followed by some new potatoes, cover that up with the rest of your salt, and pack it in like this. Pop into a hot oven for 35 to 40 minutes, pull it out, use a mallet to break up the salt crust, and let's see our salty adventure. Ranks come in with a four, a four, and a 4.5, 12.5. Really tasty, but you know, at the same token, nothing that special. Is it worth this amount of salt? No. And if that had that crispy exterior, those things would be hitting hard. So slightly underwhelming. Number nine, searzol. I mean, we just sliced potatoes thin, lightly oiled and seasoned them, and used my searzol, which is an attachment on a blowtorch to diffuse the flame like this until they were cooked through. Couldn't be too bad, right? <coughs> <laughs> So bad. Our votes come in with a zero, a zero, and mm -hmm. a zero. <laughs> that is channel first triple zero. Not only is it bad, but it absorbed just about every single living ounce of the gas, of the fuel in the torch. That is what really ruined this. I mean, if you've ever wanted to know what propane tastes like, that's a... I would love to say, oh, what's going to beat this? It's a zero. What, what, you, you don't get lower than that. Number 10, the Hasselback potato. I've been annoyed by this potato dish for a long time, so this better stand on its two legs. Get a large rusty potato squirt at eighth of an inch intervals all the way through the potato. Don't use chopsticks like in the little TikToks. You're not a Goo Goo Gaga baby. You can do this. Season it up and bake in a hot oven until cooked through and crisp looking. It looks good, but looks aren't everything. With votes at a three, a four, and a four. A total of 11 points. No reason to do this, in my opinion. Just bake the potato and call it a day. If you want a crispy, do something else. On the exterior, you get potato chip vibes, which at this point, just make a potato chip or eat a potato chip from a bag. It's a baked potato with extra work. I'm just ecstatic that I'm never going to be making that again. Number 11, broiled. So the sears all is kind of like broiling, so I don't know how these are going to fare. One large rusty potato, peeled, diced, oiled up, seasoned, tossed in a pan, and broiled for about 8 to 15 minutes. I don't see this doing that well. But the rankings came in at an 8.7, a 7. Hang on. Cam is our differentiator here. Something happened here. Something happened there. And he comes in with a 7.5, a total of 23.2. We have a brand new unexpected leader. If this wins, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Why the f*** are these so good? This is the shot we got in the kitchen. Now take a look at this. Mm -hmm. That's how good they are. We've been eating these nonstop, and while they're talking, I'm drooling trying not to eat this. Moving on. Number 12, potato pave, also called the thousand layer potato. Yes, of course, it's not literally a thousand layers, but it looks like it. So we have potato slices tossed in duck fat. You're going to line them up in a paper-lined loaf pan. All the way up to the top as uniformly as possible. Cover with aluminum foil. Bake at 300 Fahrenheit until cooked through. Then remove the foil and press with another loaf pan and some cans to weigh it down. Put that in the fridge. Take it out. Portion it into little bars of potato. Season generously with salt and sear for two to three minutes per side in a hot pan. It's a beautiful thing. Let's taste. So the rankings coming in at a whopping 8.5. Oof, a 6.5. Cam's gonna have to get a high score to even do any. And an 8.5. That's a little much. You're a little less. A total of 23.5. Our new leader by quite literally point three points. I think it's that good. Texturally on the outside, crunchy. Inside, it's soft. It goes deeper than your average French fry, which I think is like texturally comparable to this. I think this is one of the best ways you can eat a potato. And compared to all the other dishes that are out there, I mean, it's really good, but is it that good? There's so many more we have to taste. Number 13, a global classic lemon potato. 
potatoes. These are also known as Greek lemon potatoes. So we got some Yukon gold potatoes that have been peeled and cut into wedges. Pop those into a roasting pan. Some whole peeled garlic cloves, a lot of olive oil. You add some chicken stock, a generous glug, a fresh squeezed lemon juice, salt to taste, some aromatics like rosemary. And you're gonna pop those in a hot oven for 25 to 30 minutes. And most of the liquid should be cooked out and absorbed by the potatoes with just oil left over to lightly fry them. I mean, they look nice and they smell real nice. So let's vote. <laughs> A nine, a seven, and a 7.6. 23.6 gives lemon potatoes our new overall leader. Arguably, of a non-crispy potato, one of the best ways you could probably eat a potato. There's a new flavor that doesn't really go with potatoes that I haven't had before. The only thing that could take these up a notch is if they were crispy. So moving on. Number 14, pomme de terre fondant. Fondant potato. We've seen these everywhere, but are they really as good as everyone says they are? Trim the ends off a large russet potato, cut the potato in half, should be two by two two inch pieces of potato. Sear your potatoes on both sides on medium high till GBD. Reduce the heat to medium. Add some unsalted butter, some aromatics, and baste for about one to two minutes. And finally, you're gonna add a generous splash of high quality chicken stock. Bring to a boil, and the pan goes into the oven to braise for 20 to 25 minutes until no liquid remains. Remove, spoon a little bit of your butter on top of the potatoes. It was some thinly sliced chives, maybe some flaky salt, one of the most famous classics. And now we rank. A six, a six, and a 7.2, 19.2. I think it's a really cool technique that has really good results. Depth of flavor, texture, yeah, about there. Moving on. Oh, fond no. Number 15, potato and papillote. I don't know that this is the best way to cook a potato, but whatever. Put some new potatoes in a parchment bag. Add some butter, salt, some aromatics like thyme and rosemary. Close that bad boy shut, doit, and pop into a medium oven for 30 to 40 minutes. Remove from the oven and let's taste. The rankings come in at a, whoa, 1.5, a 2, and a 4.2, a 7.7. .7. What the f Cam? This was not a good potato. But why is it a 4.2, Cam? The texture was okay, and it was nice and creamy. But other than that, the skin was like, not that crisp that you want out of a potato. It was giving burnt paper bag vibes mm -hmm. for no reason. This method is kind of dumb. You didn't really get much of the herbaceousness there from the herbs, so it's like, eh. Yeah, the herbs got killed. Wow. Potato and papillote? How about potato and papi nope? <laughs> Sorry, that was stupid. Moving on to grilled. We're just doing this very basic, one whole oiled russet potato, lightly seared on the hot side side of a grill and then move to the cooler side of the grill covered and cooked for 40 more minutes remove from the grill and we taste Ooh. it's not that good a three a four and a four total points of 11 it is an average baked potato what did it develop from being grilled the skin being burnt it is extremely hard not to char the skin and i thought well maybe a little char would be nice on this it wasn't it's not really enjoyable on the outside but then the inside is really soft and nice i'd rather just have a baked potato the only thing i liked about this was the texture that i got in the inside other than that it's really subpar baked potato moving on to a pizza oven so obviously not everyone has a pizza oven but don't you want to know what it would be like if you ate a pizza oven potato. We heat a large pan in our pizza oven, which has been preheated to about 600 Fahrenheit. So we add our oil to our pan, add our russet potato, season with salt, and cook in the oven, tossing occasionally for about five to eight minutes. That's how fast he's cooked. Let's taste. And the rankings came in at a five, a four, and another four. Total 13 points. So it was okay, but maybe better on a pizza. I will say, here's a benefit to the pizza oven. The speed. It cooks really fast. If you just want a cooked seasoned potato cooked quickly, there's your method. Moving on. The next one, direct coal cooking. I want to wrap it in foil, put it directly over coals. But the problem is, if you do that, it'll burn. I got to create some sort of a barrier to prevent this. I shove some skewers in it to create a barrier between the foil and the potato so it doesn't burn. Put it directly over some flaming coals. Then I thought, what the hell are you doing, Josh? This is isn't a legitimate cooking method, so we use the tondoor instead. My fine rose gold tondoor. It's gotta be one of the most expensive cooking utensils I have, so it better deliver. So we skewer a large russet potato on the tondoor skewer. We oiled it, we seasoned it, we popped it in there for about 30 minutes, returning occasionally, and now we taste. A one, a two, and a 2.5. A total of 5.5. Can't say I'm happy with that score. Wow, one of the biggest losses for the tondoor ever. This did not benefit from being cooked like that at all. The outside was unnecessarily chewy, very bitter. Even if we hadn't burnt it, I just think it being above those hot coals for so long, really not nice. I mean, inside was pretty much a little lower than an average baked potato, and the outside is not really edible. It doesn't have a good flavor to it either. Apparently, vegetables just aren't it for the tondoor. A shocking winner for the roasted category, lemon potatoes. Moving on to the boiled category with, you guessed it, a boiled potato. Do you really need info on this? You take a large roasted potato, you put it in boiling water, you cook it for anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes, or until fork tender. It's boring, but is there beauty in simplicity? Let's find out. 
Vikram, a 1. Me, a 3.8. And Cam, a 3. A lowly 7.8. That's a little much to give it a 1, I feel like. Listen, to <laughs> me, if you were able to take a bite into a potato, just whole, that's what it would taste like. Really under average potato. A boiled potato is clearly not the best way to eat a potato, but it is a good, like, base thing. Maybe if they were dressed up, they'd be better. Number 20, poached. This is a butter poach, which seems unfair, but how good could it actually be? Place one large russet potato into two pounds of melted unsalted butter. Cook for anywhere between 40 minutes to one and a half hours, depending on how hot. Remove the potato, season, and let's taste. Vikram coming in with a two. Me, a four, and Cam, a six. Total, 12. This potato is really boring, considering it was cooked in hot butter. The butter just doesn't come through whatsoever. It just tastes like a baked potato, and you're using that much butter to just get a baked potato. I thought this was kind of like an upgrade to a baked potato. And to me, this was just like slightly better because of that <laughs> butter, you know? Moving on. <laughs> Number 21, steamed, which makes me sad, but why would you do that? But anyway, add a potato to a steamer basket, set over one quart of boiling water, and gently steam for 40 minutes until fork tender. Now let's rank. Now the ratings come in with Vikram at a 0.5. Jesus, Vikram. Myself with a 3.2 and Cam with a 1. A total of 4.7, our lowest score yet, and frankly, not a surprise. I think the biggest difference between this and the boiled is there was salt in the boiling water, so that little bit of salt penetrated the potato, so it tasted just that little bit better. This is just a straight up potato. Like, whatever you feel about a straight up potato, that is this. The potato doesn't taste bad. It's just super boring. <sighs> Moving on. Number 22, palm puree. We have rice boiled potatoes, and we're gonna emulsify a whole pound of butter into that. Once emulsified, you add a nice, generous glug of whole milk, season to taste with salt, and spoon immediately onto a plate. It's smooth, it's luscious, but could it take the lead? Let's vote. Vikram, a six. Ugh, not looking good. Me, a seven, hang on. And Cam, an eight. A total for 21. Salty, buttery, rich, very smooth potato. It really pays respect to the potato. But it's very singular, it's a side, it's not a standalone dish in my opinion. And if I have the choice between this and a mashed potato, I'm gonna pick a mashed potato. I'm the exact opposite. I would pick this over mashed potato 9.9 .9 out of 10 times. Okay, moving on. On to another classic, palm aligo, aligot. Same exact recipe as the palm puree, but right before serving, you fold in a lot of shredded gruyere cheese, a little bit at a time until fully melted, and you get a cheesy pulled potato. Now let's rank. Vikram with a five, a 6.7, and an 8.5. Total 20.2. To me, I'd only eat like three to four tablespoons of it. It's really filling, really cheesy, and it's enjoyable for those couple bites. But eating this much of it, there's no way I could do that. It's an upgraded palm puree. So I upgraded my palm puree score. I've never liked this as much as I like mashed potatoes. I like cheese in mashed potatoes, but I don't love it. So it's good, but it's not the king of mashed potatoes. It's funny how the classic palm puree beat this. Sometimes, again, there's beauty and simplicity. On to another classic potato salad. I love potato salad, okay? You can yell at me all you want. I shan't back down from what I adore. So into a large mixing bowl, creme fraiche, mayo, garlic, a little bit of Dijon, a little bit of lemon juice, salt and pepper, and some chopped parsley. Whisk that all together, and I have some chilled, boiled, peeled nicely. Yukon gold potatoes cut into bite-sized pieces. Fold that in. Make sure to taste and season with additional salt. And now our potato salad ratings. I'm just kidding. A five, a seven, and a seven. Total score of 19. I think this deserved a higher score. Vikram decided to be mean today. I love potato salad. Honestly, I'm very biased. It's just a perfect thing. You know, it's soft, it's refreshing, but it's also a little rich. So many flavors. But I think the beauty of it is how simple it is. You know how mashed potatoes, you can just keep eating and eating and you don't really realize how much you've eaten? I'd say with potato salad, you kind of know how much you're eating just because of the shape of it. You're like, okay, cool. That's like three potatoes. Are you doing like. math while you're eating? But unlike a lot of potato dishes we've had today, you can't just finish this whole thing. Moving on. Excuse me while I'll prove Vikram wrong. <laughs> Number 25, sous vide. I mean, it's pretty basic. You put some fingerling potatoes in a vacuum bag, aromatics, salt, pop it into an 87 Celsius water bath for one to one and a half hours, pull them out, and serve. This is one of the most accurate ways to cook anything in the world. So surely it's going to rank pretty high. So Vikram comes in with an astound, a zero, whoa, a two, and a three. I wonder if anything is even gonna be able to get lower than this. If it's something I don't wanna finish chewing, it's gonna get a zero regardless. But this straight up tastes like soap. And from a texture position, not any better than any other way to cook a potato. It's just more time and effort. Low and slow is not the answer. Moving on to number 26, which is one of the most unusual ways I've ever seen a potato cooked in my entire life. Colombian salt crusted. Boil two pounds of small potatoes in heavily salted water. Once it reaches a boil, Continue to boil and simmer for 15 to 20 minutes until all the liquid is evaporated from the pan and a light salt crust develops around the potatoes. This looks kind of fun. Let's taste. 
and the rankings came in at a four, a five, and a six. 15 points. It's a cooked potato that's salty. I mean, it's really not that crazy, but they do taste good. Overly season a baked potato and you will have the same result. Funny enough, this actually beat out the salt baked with a salt crust, which makes absolutely no sense, but we'll take it, brother. Number 27, the slow cooker. Another device I have always hated. Add two pounds of fingerling potatoes, two tablespoons of olive oil to your slow cooker, season with salt, mix it around, and turn to high for three to four hours. Should be okay. And now it's time for a taste test. First one with a one. Okay, maybe not okay. A two and a two. Total score of five. We're never doing that again. Just grab a pan, some oil, and cook your potatoes normally. Don't put it in a slow cooker because it's just going to be garbage. You know, it's not as bad as the sous vide ones. The potatoes are cooked properly, and that is the only thing it has going for it. Number 28, instant mashed potatoes. I hate every single ounce of this. I have never in my life opened one of these bags before. And because of you and my production team and everybody, the editors, I know you're watching this, made me do this. I'm not even going to describe it. You Take the stupid stuff, you put it in a stupid bowl, and you add hot water. How disgusting is that? I know that there are reasons that people use Instant Mash, and I'm not judging you. Something about this hurts my soul. Anyway, let's rank. A 3.5, a 1, and a 3. Thank goodness this is not a leader. Total for 7.5. You know how your mouth starts watering right before you throw up? The thing I really don't like about them is they taste like margarine and not butter. I can appreciate a good mashed potato, and I wouldn't say this is the worst. It's not the best, but for the economic reasons, I think it is really high up there. I'd say a lot of people have had this and had a good experience. <laughs> if you're looking for something that's good, this is nowhere on the spectrum whatsoever. Horrific. Moving on. Number 29, one of the biggest heavy hitters in the world, mashed potato. So boil your potatoes in lightly salted water. Once fork tender, remove, drain. To keep this fair, we mash these by hand till as fine as possible. Then we have a mixture of melted butter, milk, and heavy cream. Whisk that into your mashed potatoes. Season to taste with salt. Let's taste. Rankings come in at an 8.5, a seven. We may have a winner and a 7.5, 23 points total. It's creamy. There's a depth of flavor to be had. I could eat this with my dinner five nights a week. It's versatile. You can add anything to it. It has an amazing texture and it's just a classic. This is one of my most favorite potato dishes of all time. That means the mashed potatoes win the boiled category and I'm glad, you know, they deserve that. Our last category is the world's favorite way to cook a potato fried. Starting off with home fries. It's barely a shallow fry, but we'll put it in the fry category. You add some diced potatoes to a hot, generously oiled pan, at least a, just under a quarter inch of oil. Add your seasonings of choice, cook constantly for a few minutes, add a little bit of butter, toss together. Once they're cooked through and browned nicely, we take taste. A 5.5, a 5, and a 6.5. A total of 17 points for a very okay dish. Tastes great. You're never going to be disappointed with it, but it's only as good as the spices you put on it. And that's it. It's above average because you're going to consistently get a good side. You can make home fries pretty much with anything, and they'll always be the same. I'm not going to waste your time and repeat what they just said. We're looking for the greatest potato method. We got to be harsh here. Moving on. Number 31, diner style hash browns. One of my very favorites. Hopefully a winner. You got some shredded rinsed russet potato and it's very simple. You get a greased griddle, you heat it over medium heat, you add a nice pile and you just let it cook six to eight minutes. Once your bottom is GBD, by the bottom of the potatoes, you nasty. And the top is starting to cook, flip and cook on the other side until cooked through. Now let's rank. To which we ranked a six, a six, and an eight for a total of 20 points. I can't complain. I wish it was a little higher though. Out of all the potato dishes on planet Earth, is this really gonna be the winner? It's great for breakfast with some eggs and stuff, but that's it. It's classic, it's great, it's a bit above average. I don't know if it was exactly amazing, but it took me to a place. You had a ratatouille moment. Yeah. That's beautiful. Number 32, stir fry. You ever thought to stir fry a potato? So we have a hot wok with vegetable oil in it. Once it begins to smoke, we added one pound of new potatoes to the wok, which have been sliced in half, and simply stir fry seasoning with salt to taste for 10 to 12 minutes. They're soft and crisped up. Now let's rank. A 4.8, a 6.2, and a 7. Total of 18 points. The only thing I loved about these potatoes that elevated them to this level was the uniqueness and the nice flavorful qualities that it got from the wok hay. And it brought out a certain flavor out of these potatoes that no other technique has done so far. Twisted the skins. I don't know what I'm not getting that these guys are getting. I've tried this a couple times now, and I'm just trying to see if I can see the same thing. I don't really like the flavor, so. That's tough, moving on. Number 33, palm roasty. This recipe you can actually find in the description, which is in our video, Meal So Easy, a college student couldn't make it. These are actually very easy. Let's taste. 
which came in at a ranking for a 6.5, a 7, and a 7.5. Total, a 21 point dub for an easy dish. It's crunchy on the outside, but it's like voluptuous and moist on the inside. Maybe voluptuous is not the right word. Hey Siri, what does voluptuous mean? Voluptuous means of a woman curvaceous and sexually attractive. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I meant, okay? It's really good, it's a seven. Very light, airy, crispy on the outside, which is what you want out of a potato, and then a really soft, buttery inside. Bonus points for being really easy to do. It's just a really well executed potato dish. It's cooked great on that outside, gets the crunch you want, and then it has that like nice soft potato center that you expect. Moving on. Next up, potato latka. Probably one of the most famous fried potato cakes in the game. So we're picking this up with pre-shaped latkas that are a mix of grated russet potato, onion, egg, and panko. That gets tossed together, formed into pucks, and then gently shallow fried for about one to two minutes per side until GBD. Now let's rank. So the ranking seven in with a 5.5, a seven, and an 8.5. Total of 21. That's a tie with palm roasty. You know, honestly, I think it's because it's a special dish. But also, you know, there's some more aromatics in it. And to me, it's just easier to eat. I think by themselves, they're not as fun as they are with toppings. With appy sauce and sour cream, that's a 10. But by itself, it's just kind of like an onion flavored hash brown. I've loved latkes my entire life. When I was a kid, I did used to just eat them plain, but there's something special about the technique behind these to me. The onion, man, that's it's the, the, that's onion the secret. really drives it. It's reminiscent of a kimchi pancake. So moving on. Next up, palm dauphine, another old recipe. It's literally just a potato shoe pastry dough. It's shoe dough mixed with rice mashed potato. So we pick these up from that point, deep fry those bad boys until GBD. They look like this. They're puffy, fragrant, and we rank. Rankings at a 6.7, a 6, and a 6.5. Total, 19.2. It's above average. It's good. Honestly, very rich. I will say, out of any fried potato dish, this is probably at the bottom for me. What I yeah. didn't enjoy is you can really taste how oily it is, and that kind of takes away from the eating experience. It's a crunchy, slightly aerated fried potato. You can't really go wrong with that situation. But it might not blow you away. That's just the takeaway. Moving on. Moving on to the croquette. It's a perfect thing to use leftover mashed potatoes for, but we'll see how good they really are. So we have our leftover potatoes, which we've rolled into balls, and we bread in a three-step breading process into all-purpose flour, then beaten eggs, and finally tossed in breadcrumbs, coated and deep fried until a beautiful GBD. Let's taste. Our votes come in with a 6.5, a 6, and an 8.5. Cam really likes croquettes with a total of 21 points, making this a three-way tie with latkes and roasty. They're iconic and they're good and they're crunchy and it's nice and all, but I never order croquettes at a restaurant and I never crave them. Yeah, they're good. I'll eat one or two. Kind of dries your mouth out, so that's kind of something it's got going against it. You bread and fry mashed potatoes. That's an ultimate food. Sounds good on paper. Moving on. Ah, my old friend, the George Foreman. And by the way, when I say old friend, I mean arch nemesis. I hate this thing, but I will be honest. It has performed well in these videos. So we have sliced potato. We grease them up, season them, put them in the George Foreman and just let them do their thing. Pulled them out. And now it's time for a taste test. And we ranked at a three, a 3.5, a three with a total of 9.5. Finally, the George Foreman out. You know, George Foreman has surprised us in the past. This time, no. There's not much to say about this other than George Foreman sometimes works for some things. I, I'm shocked to say potatoes is not one of them. It was just bad, real bad. But not the worst we've had. Moving on. Next up, palm souffle. Another modified recipe from my book. Again, you could buy it in the link in the description. Slice your potato extremely thin, anywhere between an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch. It has to be transparent enough to see your fingers through it. Take two slices, brush one with cornstarch, and then brush the other, optionally, with egg white. The egg white isn't a necessity, but it does help adhere if it's your first time. Press together, use a five centimeter ring mold to punch out little circles and fry at 350 Fahrenheit, basting often. Once they've stopped bubbling and they have reached a GBD, pop on a wire rack to drain and season with salt. These are pretty cool. Yeah, I think these are better for cracking open and filling with a savory cremeau, but you know, it's up to you. Time to rate. Four, a six, and a five. Total score, 15. Surprise, but makes sense. It's kind of like a potato chip. Funny enough, not as good as a potato chip. Technique-wise, it is above average, but I think at the end of the day, the flavor you get is just average. That's where I had it as well, and then I just docked a point because it was so difficult and time-consuming to make. It's a lot for a little, so moving on. We have four more potato dishes left, but each of these potato dishes have the opportunity to become the winner because they are arguably the greatest, most beloved potato dishes that exist. 
starting with number 39, potato chips. We have super thinly sliced starchy potato, which have been soaked in a light brine, patted dry, deep fried until a very light golden. Not GBD, just golden. So GD. Once they stop bubbling, pull them out and drain to make sure they are crosshatch rack. Season immediately generously with salt, and now we vote. Oh! An 8.5, an 8, and a 9. A total of 25.5, ousting the three-way tie in first place. Big jump overall for our leader. The potato chip is an addictive thing across the globe and beloved by almost everybody on planet Earth for a reason. And if it's done this well, god damn. 8.5 for me because it's the base of so many good other chips. Like this solid, basic salt potato fry. But it's super addictive. You could eat a 1,000 of them. And if you can eat a 1,000 of something, it's definitely a high score. This is one of the best best chips I've ever had in my life. Moving on. Number 40, battered seasoned fries, inspired by the Arby's curly fry. We have a potato cut into a fry shape. We dip in a seasoned batter and deep fry. Cooked until a GBD. I mean, these are so crispy I can hear them when I lay them on the wire rack. Season to taste with salt and we rank. Did you guess what Cam's gonna put it as? I'll try. You're gonna be wrong. A five, a 7.5, and a 7.5. Shockingly low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the predictions are crazy. I guessed what Cam was gonna write. It relies too much on the batter, not the potato. The crunch factor gives it this addictive quality. The crunch is awesome. You don't necessarily fully lose the potato. You basically just get the fried chicken version of a french fry. Moving on. But well, we got a big boy coming up next. Number 41, tater tots. Listen, this isn't your little baby, ooh, I tripped and stubbed my widow toe. I gotta go to the nursing office elementary school frozen variety of tater tots. These are Michelin deluxe duck fat fried. But can they beat all these potato dishes? So we have russet potato that's been shredded, confit in duck fat. We season and taste with salt mixed with cornstarch and shape into tots. Lightly freeze them and then immediately from frozen, deep fry until GBD. I mean, look at these beauties. They just look crunchy. Season and taste with salt while hot and let's taste. Jesus Christ. Our first one with a nine, an 8.5. Oh man, this is real close to our potato chip. And Cam comes in with a 9.5, a total of 27 points. Our new leader overall, this raised the bar. I don't know if a potato can be better than this. It's like crunchy, it's salty, it's rich, it's got depth of flavor, but it's not too rich. The quality of the crunch though is insane. There's a lot of potato dishes we've had that need a lot added to it, but it's pretty much everything you want on a potato is here. This plate used to be full. I have been eating these all day long and I've had to fully restrict myself to ensure that there were some left on this plate for this moment. Probably one of the best potatoes I've eaten in my life. Moving on. But wait, there's only one dish that could potentially dethrone this. Number 42, French fries. You don't need me to explain this to you. This recipe comes from my new cookbook, Texture Over Taste, so I'm putting myself on the line here. We're picking this up from the process where the fries are pretty much done and frozen and ready to be finished, which they'll be deep fried in hot beef fat until golden, crispy, delicious French fries emerge. Season immediately with salt and serve while crispy and hot. Let's taste. Yeah! An 8.2, an 8.5, and a 9. Coming in at a 25.7. Where does that stack up against our tots? Oh, so close. That means that the duck fat tater tots are our overall winner for the fried category. Mashed potatoes win the boiled category. And lemon potatoes win the baked roasted category. So now we move on to our final challenge. We're going to combine all three of these potato dishes that create arguably one of the best potato dishes that has never existed that now will. We are going to be making a Greek lemon tater tot with a potato ranch. Shred two large peeled russet potatoes on a coarse box grater setting. To that, you're gonna add one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt, about one pint of lemon juice. Yes, it's a lot. Two quarts of water and brine for about 30 minutes. Remove from the brine and follow the same process as the tots, but this time, confit and lemon peel aromatics, form into tots and freeze in our same pot of duck fat, which has been strained. So yes, you can keep it overnight. And you're gonna fry those in duck fat again at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius until the most beautiful, crunchy, tantalizing GBD I think I have ever seen from a tater tot. Transfer to a wire rack, season with salt, and that's your tater tot. We could just serve this by itself, but what about the mashed potato element? Potato ranch. Into a medium sauce pot, add two small Yukon gold potatoes, heavy cream, milk, unsalted butter, two cloves of garlic, bring to a boil, cook until fork tender, then use an immersion blender and puree it until smooth as possible. Finally, pass through a chinois or fine mesh strainer. You know, we want this extra fine. Add some herbs like thyme, dill, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, stir, and it should look beautiful like this. Serve that with your tots. And now, the final taste. Here's our potato ranch. 
That's the greatest bite of potato I've ever had. Lemon on the inside. Everything you love about a tater tot on the outside. Mixed with this potato ranch with elements of mashed potatoes, all this really did combine to make the greatest bite of potato. Take the greatest tater tot you've ever had in your life, make it lemony, make it herbaceous, and then make potato ranch? It's unreal. It's kind of everything you want. This is like the ideal balance, right? It's salty, it's fatty, it's ridiculously crunchy. It has all the crunch elements. Every single element of what we like about our favorite potato dishes today. Do you mind? <laughs> there are tons of potato dishes out there that are delicious. Maybe this is the end all be all, maybe it's not. But one thing that I do know is this might just very well be the greatest potato dish I have ever eaten in my life. But it's up to you to figure out what that is. So that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.